Good evening, boys and girls. My name is Scott, and today we're going to solve the baseball game problem on Leak Code. This is a super straightforward problem. We'll just run through the problem definition and implement it real quick. It doesn't require any crazy data structures or algorithms. Yeah, we can talk about stacks, which I haven't had a video that involves a stack yet, and if, go through an example of switch cases in Java, something else I haven't done yet. So. We're given a baseball game point of re or recorder. That's what we are. We are recording points. And we're given a list of strings, and each of the string is one of the types. It's an integer, which is just the score for that round. It's a plus, which means the score we get that round is the sum of the last two rounds. It's a D, which means the score that we get for that round is double the score we got in the previous round. Or it's a C, which means we don't get any points for that round. It just means the last round's points were invalid, and we remove those. So let's go through the first example, this one right here. Round one is a five. We get five points, so we have five points. Round two, we get two points. We sum to seven points. Round three is a C, which means the two is invalid. We get bumped back down to five points. And then we get a D, which means we get double the points we got last round. So the last one we had was 5, doubles a 10, so now we have a total of 15. And then the plus, we just sum the last two that we had together. So we get 5 plus 10 is 15 points, which totals our points to 30. Very straightforward and simple. The implementation is very straightforward as well. Now, when we're trying to remember things that have happened in the most recent past, and we need to remember everything that's happened before, you want to go with a stack. A stack is a last in first out algorithm. I'm uh, sorry, last in first out data structure. What that means is when we put something into a stack, the first thing we get out of it is the thing we just put in. The classic analogy for stacks is a, uh, a stack of plates at a restaurant, sort of one of those all-you-can-eat buffets, which are not the cleanest places I wouldn't advise going there, but everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, when you take one of those plates off, it's the first one that's been, it's the most recent one that was pushed onto it. So that's how a stack works. And so when you're faced with a problem that asks you to do something like, like what this one's doing, the the most recent round, the most recent valid round, we're going to use a stack. So that's how we're going to remember what the last valid round was. So we're going to loop through our input. The current operation is going to be the operation at the index. Now here's what a switch case statement looks like in Java. We're going to switch on the op, the operation that we have for this one. And then you just write out what your cases are. So what happens if it's a C? Well, if it's a C, then we just, then a C means that the most recent thing that we put onto the stack, the most recent score we put onto the stack was invalid. So we just remove it. So we just pop it off the stack. That's all there is to it. And in these switch case statements, you always need a break. Because if you don't have a break, then it'll execute this case, and then it'll execute the remaining cases beneath it. What happens when we have a D as input? Well, that means we get double the previous, right? We get double the previous. And we're just keeping track of our round scores on this valid points. So we're going to do valid points. We're going to push onto the stack double the pre double the previous one so two by valid points peak if you're unfamiliar with uh, java's stack implementation this peak method returns the value on the top of the stack without actually taking it off the top of the stack pop takes it off the top of the stack and then we break so what happens if we have a plus? 
Well, that means we, for this one, we get the sum of the previous two. Now, for the previous two, we need to see the last two things on the stack. So we're going to have to do a pop and then a peak. So we're going to have to pop one off to get the most recent one, and then we have to do a peak. So the current value that we get is going to be the previous value plus the peak. Okay, so we've calculated what we get in this round. Now we have to push them onto the stack. Now remember, it's last in, first out, and we want to keep the order right. So the first thing that we push is previous to keep that order. And then we push the current and then break. And the default case. So the default case for Java switch cases is the one that's executed when nothing else happens. So hasn't been a C, hasn't been a D, hasn't been a plus. In our case, that means it must be an integer. So all we do is push onto the stack the integer value of the current round score. All right, so when we get to end of the, the end of this for loop here, all the round scores are in the stack. So we just loop over the stack and sum up our score. I should do it. Let's give it a run. See if we've broken anything. Crossed all our I's, dotted all our T's. Alright, we're looking good. Let's submit the solution. And it's accepted. Super straightforward problem. Uh, the big takeaway is when you see a problem and you're going to be doing something like you need to keep track of everything you've seen, but what's, what matters to you is the order you've seen them, and you want to see the most recent thing first, use a stack. So there's that, and then there's how this switch case works. That is it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful, and we'll see you next time.